Hey you guys, in this video we're going to check out a new feature of BigCommerce called multi-location. See what that's all about. Before we get started, my name is Cal. I'm a developer and a store owner just like you. And I've been on BigCommerce for almost 15 years, so I'm starting to get the hang of it. Let's talk about multi-location. Now this is a really cool feature. And it's going to get cooler over time. If you look at the multi-location page, as of you know the time that I'm filming this, there are some things that are in place and some things that are coming soon. Specifically, buy online, pick up in store is not supported using multi-location yet. It does say that it's expected to be added at a later date. Now, buy online, pick up in store is not the only reason to use this. It's gonna be really cool when you can have like five locations and have people choose the location, but that part's not built out yet. So what is? What is, is the ability to actually manage and maintain inventory in separate places. So prior to this, you have one inventory field per SKU and you say, I have eight units, that's it. Now, if you have that, you know, available from two different drop shippers and a 3PL or you're stocking inventory in your garage as well as, you know, some other location or if you actually have you know, a couple different stores that you mail out of, retail locations, there was no way to really keep track of the fact that I have two units here, five units here, 10 units over there to come up with a total of 17 units. Now there is. And so I wanted to go through and show this to you guys because uh, it might solve some of your needs. Now, there's still a time and a place for a proper inventory management system. Those are external systems that get more full featured than what this does, but they're also not included in your big commerce fee, right? So normally when you look at an inventory management system, even on the cheaper end, you know, expect to spend a couple hundred bucks, you know, 300 bucks could be a lot higher depending on which one that you use and what all that it does. So it's a substantial, uh, you know, cost addition if you're going to use something external. So the fact that some of you guys may be able to get by using this new feature, pretty cool. Okay, so there are some limitations and some things that you have to make sure that you have in order for this to work. The biggest of which is this, you must be using the V3 product UI. If you've had your store created in the last two, maybe three years, you're already on V3. If you've had your store for significantly longer than that, you've probably already been hearing about the debate about going to V3 or not. You can tell if you're on V3 by looking at your product uh, edit screen and if it has tabs down the left, you're on the V3 UI, so no problem. If you have tabs across the top, you're on V2 still, and you probably wanna talk with somebody like us to figure out how are you gonna get from here to there. So that's kind of a big one for some of you. You have to be on V3, you have to be using the latest version of the list, you have to have the right user permissions assigned to your user, um, so there are some new user permissions that weren't there previously. And um, multi-origin is not currently supported, but it's coming in the future. So this is for calculation to determine, you know, which, which place you're actually going to be shipping from in order to uh, determine different shipping costs, like if you're using a real-time shipping calculator. So that's not there yet. It's coming. And let's see here. Low stock and out of stock notifications are sent for the default location only. So... Right now, you know, it's not fully baked, but there is still some usefulness and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Uh, enabling it, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It's basically coming into settings, location, and then just adding a new location. So if you're on V3 product UI already, then if you go into settings, actually before we do that, let's look at this, um, this product that I had up. And if I click down into inventory, you can see I have track inventory on the variant level. And if I click where you know it uh, lets me manage inventory, it takes me down here to where I can specify stock numbers right here in my variant table. So this is how it looks without it, quote unquote, being turned on. Now I say quote unquote, because if you're on V3, you technically already have multi-location. You just don't have multiple locations turned on. So it's a very easy thing to turn on. Let me show you. Let's go to settings, and then right here in settings, you should see 
Locations new. And as far as I know, everybody that's on V3 should already have this. I don't think that this is like being beta tested or anything anymore. So you should see this right now. Click into that and it says, okay, here's, here's all of your locations. So right now you have exactly one, which is the default location. Now this one, it cannot be deleted because uh, you don't because you have stock assigned to it, right? And everything, every piece of stock is assigned to a location, and so by default, everything is assigned to this location. Therefore, you cannot delete it. It says enabled. I think maybe you could disable it. Nope, because it's the shipping origin, and you can't change the shipping origin. Okay, <coughs> I digress. All we have to do to turn this on is click Add New, put in the name, we'll call this DSM. You can call it whatever you want. This is what customers would see if Buy Online Pickup and Store was enabled for them to choose which location. So for right now, this isn't this isn't going to show anywhere, right? Um, but in the long run, once this is available to show places, like in the front end then you would want to use the code to name name it whatever you really want to call it without the customer seeing it. Now, you do have to fill in this stuff. Um, so let me fill it in real quick. Geolocation, what the heck is this? You got to put in latitude and longitude, and you do have to put it in, right? So if I put in, uh, if I just skip that, and show you guys the rest of this. Uh, you can have location details. This isn't outputting anywhere at the moment. Once the once buy online pickup and store is available, then this would tell them when they can pick it up. So for right now, you can leave that or turn it off. It doesn't really matter. And if I try to click save, then it's going to error and say, you got to have latitude and longitude, man. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. You gotta have latitude and longitude. Eventually, this is gonna be used when you do have multi, uh, multi shipping origins, so that it knows where you're really shipping to and whatnot. So all you have to do to get this is go to a site like latlong.net and type in your address, and it'll say, "Okay, here's your latitude and longitude. No problem." Uh, okay, wrong thing. So latitude and longitude. That's it, click save. And now we officially have two locations. We have our default, which again, cannot be created or destroyed currently. And we have our new location, DSM, which is enabled. Now I could disable this uh, because it's not the primary one, but I want it enabled. Okay, let's go back to that product. Now, from the category screen, you can see that it shows us the stock. This is actually going to be your total stock combined across all of your locations. So this small, I should have nine units in all my, co in all my locations combined. Go into the product, click to go down to inventory, and now you see this, right? First of all, we no longer see stock in the variant table. I don't think we even add it. Nope, we can't add it. Um, so we, we see this right here. And this looks a little bit weird. Now, this product is tracking on the variant level because it is a variant product, but it would be on the product level if it was a simple product. We can click this to switch between any of our SKUs. So right now it's on small. And you can see that we, sh we see the default location and we see the DSM location. And we have nine units of stock here and we have zero units of stock here. If I click into it and say for this uh, for this small one, uh, this is going to let me switch between default and DSM. So if I switch to default, you'll see I have still that nine units of stock. If I switch to DSM, I'm going to put one unit of stock in there and click save and edit. And save. Now you can see it's updated to have nine here and one here. And if I go back to this view, the DS735S, the small that I was looking at, now shows the combined inventory of 10. Now, 
I know what you're thinking, which is this user interface is not super friendly because I can't go in here and click into every size and then click into here and then click into my stock and then and then click to save it and then have to click to save. Like I can't do that for every single unit of inventory and you shouldn't. I mean, you shouldn't be tracking your inventory by manually typing it in a big commerce no matter what. But the nice thing is that now you have a separated field. So you have a field for here, you have a field for there, you could have fields for a couple more. And whatever inventory tool that you're going to use to keep track of this, which could be an inventory management system, it could be an app like the one I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. It could just be uh, a Google Sheet that you connect to here uh, and, and man manage your inventory per location. Whatever tool that you're going to use to actually manage multiple warehouses of inventory locations and quantities, you know, a tool like BigCommerce is not going to be robust enough to manage all that right here in one panel. So you're going to want to use an external tool to update those. And um, that would end up pushing this data, like the stock here versus the stock there on a SKU by SKU level into your store through the API. But the cool thing about this feature is you now have separated fields. And that is a game changer because now you can say like, if this supplier gives me a CSV with inventory and this 3PL gives me a, a CSV with inventory, I can automate those by pushing them into, into two spots. So previously there was only one spot. You can't push two things into one thing, right? Because it's just going to overwrite each other. But now you can separate them out. So this is a really cool feature. There is more stuff coming that's going to make it more useful, but this is pretty cool. Kind of turns BigCommerce into a light inventory management system. Okay, let me show you an app. There are lots of apps out there, and there are manual things and automations that you can build to type in your inventory into these two locations now that they exist. But I'm going to just show you one way because this app is super cost-effective, and if you're on the, the lighter end of uh, complexity in your inventory, this might totally work and save you a ton of money. So most inventory management systems are anywhere from 200 to 500 bucks. If they're almost a borderline ERP, you know, there are inventory management systems that are really ERP systems that, you know, could span a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. So you can get super crazy with cost in inventory management. But this app that I'm going to show you guys is called Stock Sync. And this can work really well with this multi location system that Big Commerce has built. And it is super affordable. How affordable is it? Let's show you guys how affordable it is. If we come in here to billing, upgrade, this is how affordable it is. Like, this app, if this fits your needs, is such a ridiculously good deal, like ridiculous. So if I have 3,000 variants that I'm updating per update and I only have one feed, it's $5 a month. If I have more than one feed, if I have like two or three feeds because I'm using two or three drop shippers and I have a whole bunch more SKUs, 15 bucks a month. I mean, even if you go crazy and you're at the $25 range, you know, for a for a simplistic scenario, this this app is super affordable and super full featured. So let's show you what it does. When you come in here, uh, initially you're going to click create to create a feed. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to just walk you through what I've created by clicking edit settings. And this is what you're going to see if you actually go and create a feed. You'll come into step one and it'll say, Okay, how do you want this to come in? Um, now, in this particular scenario, I'm bringing it in with a CSV that's hosted from a supplier. They don't have any authentication, but if there was a name and password required in order to access this, I could put that in there. I can test the connection. I can specify like how the, how the delimiters work and stuff, but it's comma separated, so no problem. I can specify that the first row is a header and click next. Then on the next column, it has me go through and match things. So I'm saying uh, for the SKU field in the store, right? So this is the big commerce side. Map it to the SKU field in the CSV. So this is 
This is identifying the product line by line. So this is how my CSV looks from the supplier. It's got one column with a SKU, one column with quantity, that's it. And this is pretty common across a lot of uh, vendors and drop shippers or, or all kinds of people where they give you like an update CSV that's very stripped down, just like SKU, quantity, SKU, quantity, SKU, quantity. So this DS735S has nine units uh, as of when I, uh, when I took this CSV. And so, yeah. Going back here, so we're mapping SKU in the store to SKU column here. So this is how it knows which SKU is on which line. And so for each line that matches an existing SKU, it says go ahead and update the current stock level to quantity. Now, current stock level is your overall stock, right? So we don't actually want to update that. But if I click into settings, it'll let me come in here and specify which inventory location I'm actually updating. So this is saying for each SKU that matches, take the quantity number and update the current stock level at that inventory location, which is cool. So you could actually set up two feeds with this app and pipe in your inventory from this supplier using their feed and this supplier using their feed and it maps to the two different fields and makes everything nice and easy. Even if you have the same products contained at each location. Say you have two drop shippers and they both carry, you know, 20% of similar inventory. Well, you can say, let's map this up, you know, let's let's map the, you know, the SKU to the SKU or the MPN or the barcode or, you know, whatever it is, that would be the UPC. Let's map it up to both of those suppliers and you may have 5 units of this here and 10 units of it there for a combined 15, right? Which is pretty cool. Now there's actually some additional settings here in the SKU where if your, uh, your product identifier on the store or the feed has a prefix or a postfix, you can actually adjust those here. So if you add a little tag on, you know, to the beginning of your SKUs or whatever, and that's, th that's going to make it not match up to the SKUs in the feed, you can specify that and say, oh, here's the thing I've been adding. So pretend like that's not there on each SKU, and it'll map up. Okay, so let's click Next. Here's where we can... Uh, create a filter to say, you know, here's some scenarios to not match on. So if you want it to ignore some stuff, you could totally do that on both the store side and the incoming uh, feed side. And then here is where we have some additional kind of weird stuff where, you know, if something matches up, do you want it to automatically publish it, assuming that there's inventory there? Probably that's what they recommend, but you could turn that off if you like. And likewise, you can say when all the variant is when all the variant stock is zero, do you want to actually archive the product or you know make it not visible in big commerce terminology? Um, and there's some other options here. So once you get it done, you click start process and it processes it and it's going to say, okay, we updated you know 6,300 SKUs basically, and that's it. So StockSync is a is a real affordable. Uh, product. It's really great if you have a light inventory need. If you need something that you think that StockSync can't do, then reach out to me and we could talk about, you know, other platforms that might fit your needs a little bit better. There's a lot to choose from and um, we're pretty experienced with all of that stuff. So <coughs> once you get this done, you're going to have content in, you know, both of those location fields and it's really good. So, um, that's about it. I think this is a pretty useful feature. I think that there's more things that they're going to bolt on over time, like the buy online pickup and store. And um, so I'm excited about this feature, even though there's a lot of things that aren't built out yet. You know, what is there is already useful. And um, so I'm pretty excited about it. I appreciate you guys being here with me today. And uh, consider joining our community at e-commerceamplifiers.com. E if you guys need help with your store, Reach out to me at epicdesignlabs.com, and I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one.